Welcome to The Walking Dead, Season 7, Episode 4. Service. Service. I almost called it Redemption. Not That's yet. That's not what it's not called. Not even close to that. Because we're not there yet. This is Tim Frisch. I'm Kim Horcher. Francis Maxwell may be dead. Um, so in to this us, episode... at least. <laughs> dead to us. No, nah, yeah. Uh, Francis is that way for a second. He'll be back. Uh, in this episode, we are looking at... Negan's rule, or what I suppose, what it will be like for the, the group, the Alexandrites, to be under Negan's thumb, um, converted to Neganism at this point. And it, basically just the entire episode is a show of force from him. God, when someone's a Negan, they just won't stop talking about it. I know, right? they just won't shut up. We I get it, you're Negan. <laughs> so anyway, you're right, Negan does stop by early uh -huh. um, to Alexandria, catches everyone off guard. He is there to collect what is his. Uh, Rick needs to get everybody on board with the reality of the situation. We see Daryl again after his incarceration in Does the cell. Does he not say a single word? He this doesn't say a single episode? word in this episode. Correct. Wow. He didn't say a lot of words in the last episode. Yeah, he for sure didn't true. say Negan, but well, he didn't say anything this time. At least he had some crying to do and some acting to do. In this right. one, it was mostly looking sad, looking down, looking sad. We we also see that uh, Rosita gets some screen time. She wants to fight back against this occupation. Uh, Spencer a little bit, Michonne for sure, she goes out for target practice mm -hmm. in the field. And uh, Father Gabriel gets a fun little scene. I forgot all about right? him. This no, whole he, season he I've forgotten great, about him. Episode. But he's back, you know, he affirms he's Rick's friend. So are we looking at uh, sub-factions under the Alexandrite Rick group? Yes. They're forming because Rick is unable or unwilling to lead at this point? Both. He, um, there for sure has to be some internal conflict. Otherwise, everyone's just on board with Rick, mm -hmm. and they can. There, there is no, there's no moving on from this point. Mm -hmm. They just keep uh, giving stuff to Negan until there's nothing left to give, or they die, or they mess up and get killed. I mean, that's exactly because Rick said we're just going to hold on to something, and we're just going to keep. You know, today will be maybe it'll be okay today, and maybe tomorrow. But it just, this is the worst kind of survival, and that the rest of your life is basically resigned to misery. And uh, it, it's never going to get better, clearly. So they have to do something. I mean, I, I'm, I'm on board with Michonne, which is I gotta do this. This is not living. We gotta try something or maybe we'll just die and it'll be fine because that would be better than this. So let's talk about things that we liked in this episode. Um, I, I thought in comparison to some other ones we've seen recently, it's a relatively well-constructed episode. I thought it was very straightforward, no real surprises. Right, it was also a, a little repetitive, but I, I get the point of what was going on. This episode was very expository. It was showing us how life under Negan works. And life under Negan is not very fun. Mm -hmm. uh, he goes from house to house, harasses people, takes what he wants. Uh, insist that he's doing them a favor and that you should thank him, um, even with the dick sliding down throats that he's doing. That he, that's what he said. That's Tim. what he said. I think it's words, not yes, Tim's. Yes, not mine. Um, yeah, it's just, it's fine, I guess. I mean, this is kind of what we expected to happen. It's like a, a post-apocalyptic shopping trip. Is like, it, though? Ne ne Negan is going here, and he's pushing the cart down the aisle and picking out things he wants and... You know, talking I smack to the people in the as store like and post-apocalyptic racketeering. Oh yeah, but that I mean that's like, how it works. That's it. He's is that why like, there's not a ton of excitement to this episode the, because it was just a mean shopping trip. Yeah, it's just you know not as well dressed mob enforcement, I guess. Um, I I'm wondering if there's going to be any dissension under Negan's ranks at any point because before I thought Dwight might, you know, the longing in his that he had when we look at his story with his wife and his past and his wife's sister, I thought maybe he might be turnable under him. In this whole episode, he was very much Negan. Yeah, well, I mean, we'll have to see more of the saviors because mm -hmm. like Dwight experienced out on that road with that other guy, a lot of people are probably sick of living under Negan, but they don't see any other options. So what we need to do is meet them and see that they discover other options. Whether or not that's Rick or someone else in his group or another group altogether inspires them to do that, maybe Daryl. Um, we'll see that unfold as other groups get stronger, I think. Yeah, I saw that, or I saw an idea of that, at least when Michonne was talking to Rick, like, we gotta do this, and he says, we don't have the numbers. Yeah. I think Even you with the do Hilltop. have we the numbers. We don't have the numbers. I think you could have the numbers, you know, eventually. You, okay, so they have the numbers, but now they don't have the guns, which sec sets up the secondary um, uh, problem with 
that, that Rick's group has to face, mm -hmm. is now they've been essentially neutered in terms of any sort of revolt. So we're just going to refer to guns as dicks at this point? Yeah, I thought that was a pretty okay. solid symbolism. Sure. Yeah. They, they <laughs> also, neutering is not cutting off a dick. They can be cast. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That's, that's fine. I um, forgot so yes, that they have no. They have zero guns except for the one Rosita just found. Mm -hmm. And for whatever reason, Michonne was allowed to keep her sword. I thought that was nice. I and, thought they would take Michonne's right? sword. As soon as she as turned soon around. As I saw uh, her back no, with the deer. Not the sword. You need it. You're much better at swordmanship than being a shooter. She was rubbish at sniping. She She's was not really, good. really bad. Although she, did she get killed that deer. a deer. Did she mean to kill the no. deer, though? No, I don't think she yeah, did. Yeah, I don't think so either. That almost never happened That sounds hunting. like something I would do. You shoot a much That's, smaller target yeah, that you can actually Yeah, than I was really trying to do. Um, I also I also um, like the callbacks in this episode. There were references to Shane and Lori. We saw Judith again. We haven't seen her in like seven time. or eight episodes. She got big. Yeah, right? So it was nice to see that things that happen in the world of The Walking Dead actually matter and actually have character development effects on the characters that we like. It's not just like, oh, Lori and Judith and Shane were like a whole other season and that doesn't matter to Rick anymore. Those are still very much a part of his oh, life. Oh, of course. And also the um, the video camera where it showed the yeah, interviews right, with right. Deanna. And yeah. I was like, oh yeah, I remember when that was a big deal. Now it's nothing. It's nothing. Now it just seems completely unrelated. Just. Well, I thought they were decent callbacks, but you're right, I, it's unrelated. It just feels like a different world, a different show almost at that point. Um, now we're in a, I don't know if that's for better or for worse. What do you think? I mean, as an audience. I, I mean, shows have to grow and evolve. They can't dwell on the past. At the same time, you can't totally forget the six seasons that came before. So it's, it's a, it's a uh, tightrope act, I'm sure. I did like that he acknowledged... Yeah, Judah's not mine. Judah yeah. is definitely. Is that Shane's. the first time the show's like said that? Implicitly? I don't think he's ex explicitly said it, but I think it's kind of been like understood. An undertone that people understood between each other. Um, here's uh, here's uh, well, I have a couple of other complaints about this episode, but let me ask you this question. Kay. So Rick is fully on board with giving all of the guns to Megan. Yeah. He said if there's any exceptions that people are going to die, there's going to be dire consequences. But he seems okay with hiding Maggie. What, how is that different? If Negan Maggie's finds not a Maggie, gun. but if 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 Negan knows Rick hid something that Negan considered his, it'll have the same consequences, right? Um, how do you, how do you read that situation? I don't think they're going to find Maggie necessarily. Well, I mean, nice. we don't know where she is as an audience. Uh, and My guess is Hilltop. She could be, you know, she's probably the secret weapon at this point. Whatever the hell she's doing. Um, you know, this is all going to be mental and strategic uh, warfare as opposed to physical because, first of all, they can't. Second of all, she's still pregnant, I think. Right. I hope. So I hope we see Maggie again soon. I, I don't know. I just wasn't very enthused about this whole episode. It just felt like it was very much going with the motions. The callbacks were nice, but... I think they could have achieved all of this in about half the time. I think you're right. Uh, and as much as I'm enjoying Jeffrey Dean Morgan's performance as Negan, we've really still only seen one flavor of Negan. He is this charming asshole character all the time in every scene. He's never done anything different. He does it really well, but I'm waiting for him to be a more complicated character. Mm -hmm. We need to see a scene of him by himself to see what, what he's like. Oh, like when we had the governor by himself and right. we discovered, you know, his thing with his daughter and his whole past. And it made him a much deeper character when, when we know what he's like when he's not on, when he's not okay. Negan. Yeah, maybe we could deal with an entire or at least half an episode um, pertaining just to him alone. That's a good point that you made. It's just he he's interesting, but he is... Pretty predictable. Yeah. yeah, it's not it's not hard to tell which way he's gonna go, where he's gonna you know take the conversation, where he's just like this nice smiling guy, and he goes, "I put my dick down your throat, real quiet, like that." It doesn't take away from his menace. It doesn't I know, take away from what he's doing in this world and how in charge. Do you think he is. we should ever feel sympathy for Negan the way we felt sympathy for the governor, at least on some respect? And the show hasn't shown me that yet. Yeah. I don't know if we should go that way, though, because it seems like this is the villain we're going to have for a long time. You know, not like, what was that group? And uh, they, they were like a cult, and they were gone in like one episode. The and they wolves? Were, we were building up to them. The, the wolves were one. I don't yeah. remember what the other one was. And it was just, I, I think it's good that they're finally settling on someone, but I want more from him. 
Sure. I want him to be as good as the governor, who is a great villain. And and that's a good thing. We want more from your show, The Walking Dead, and the creators of The Walking Dead. Oh. Give us give us the more that we want. I think as a fan, you always want it to be, you know, at its level or as great as it can be, which is why you criticize. This is why Apple fans criticize the new MacBook. This is why sure. fans of this show criticize this show, unless, you know, sometimes I feel like this show is daring you to stop watching it. <laughs> You know, but I, I'm going to stay until I can no longer stay. And this episode wasn't, you know, the turn away quitters club, at least. That's good. On my part. Um, I, I don't know. All right. We don't know what's coming up for next week, but we still have lots to think of in terms of where Carol is in the kingdom, mm -hmm. what Daryl's up to. Maybe we'll see more from the Alexandrites. Maybe we'll see more from the Negans. <laughs> The survivors. Negan family, the Save, survivors. Survey, saviors, I'm sorry. The, the saviors, saviors. The saviors, the survivors, the Alexandrites, <laughs> Alexandrians. There's a lot of groups at play right now. The Kingdonians. Sure. I don't know. There's so many groups, and I want them to converge, and I want it to be... Um, epic. Epic, and I want it to move faster. Audience, how did you feel about this? We'll talk to you more next week. <laughs>